In this video, I will be covering the setup and operation of the SRAS Classic Air Planter. The Classic Air uses an easy to use PLC or programmable logic controller to control the planter's functions. The Classic Air can be tripped using several different methods. It can be as simple as pressing the cycle button or optional foot switch at a specific point in the plot. It can also be tripped by using a cable with check heads or a cable winder. With using SRES own global plot management software and universal planter module, the Classic Air can be tripped using GPS precision. The air in Classic Air is supplied by the onboard PTO or hydraulically driven air compressor. During the planter cycle, the PLC uses adjustable timers to operate pneumatic valves and cylinders to operate the dividers staging gates, evac valves, and alley wipers. The classic air planter uses a mechanical chain-driven transmission to set the seed spacing. It also uses a hydraulic motor and clutch to speed up the seed plate to plant plots with narrow alleys. Following all safety procedures, connect the planter to the tractor. Connect the hydraulic lines to the correct ports and connect the planter's PTO shaft to the tractor. Make sure all guards are in place before startup. Always use the following startup procedure. Engage the PTO shaft, engage hydraulics to the seed shaft motor, then turn on the main control box power. Reverse these steps when shutting down the planter. Increase the throttle of the tractor to bring the planter's fan up to the vacuum level for the crop you will be planting. Also make sure the air regulator is set to between 50 and 60 PSI. Using the hydraulic lift wheels or the tractor's three-point arms, lift the planter to its highest position. If the planter is equipped with toolbar mounted support stands, lift them and pin them up. If the planter has hydraulic lift wheels, insert the safety chocks as shown between the cylinder and the swing arm. Remove the evac hoses from the seed meter covers and remove the covers. Remove the singulators and the seed plates. Have someone press the number 6 button on the PLC and check to make sure the alley wipers are functioning. Once that's finished, replace the seed plates and singulators and rotate the seed plates counterclockwise till they stop. Using a point on the singulator on one of the rows as a reference point, jump the chains one tooth at a time on the sprockets on the seed meter to align the holes in all of the meters to match. After jumping the chain one tooth, rotate the plate back and reinspect the position. Making all the plates aligned the same will make all the rows start and stop evenly in the field. Raising the singulator lever towards the plus symbol lets more seeds pass the singulator, and lowering it towards the minus symbol lets fewer seeds pass. Reinstall the seed meter covers and the evac hoses. The knob on the back of each row unit sets the planting depth. Turning the knob clockwise will plant the seeds deeper, and turning it counterclockwise will plant shallower. For setup, set the depth as shallow as it will go, and chain up the closing wheels so you can see the seeds on the ground. The PLC has six manual function buttons. Pressing the number one button evacuates the seeds from the meter to the evac tank. Pressing the number two button evacuates the seeds from the meter to the evac tank while turning the seed plate. Pressing the number 3 button opens the divider. Pressing the number 4 button closes the divider. Pressing the number 5 button rotates the seed plate. And pressing the number 6 button turns on the alley wiper. Loosen the locking knob on the hydraulic motor's needle valve. Dump some seed directly into one of the meters and have someone hold the number 5 button down. Adjust the speed of the motor to spin the seed plate as fast as it can go without skips on the plate. Once set, retighten the locking knob. Take the planter to an open piece of land. Set the transmission for the desired seed spacing. Make sure you determine a planting speed. Set up the check heads and cable or cable winder. If using the cycle button, mark or flag the center of alley to center of alley on the ground. Also, if using the cycle button, attach something visible to the planter or tractor for the operator to use as reference when to press the button when it crosses the center of alley lines in the field. 
if using the Universal Planter module, make sure your plot lengths and alley lengths are set in the program. The first setting is the evac time. This is how long in seconds evacuation takes place. You want to evac all of the seeds before the motor starts turning. This will minimize the pile of seeds at the clean out point in the alley. We recommend at least 1.5 seconds of evac time with a minimum of 1 seconds in optimal conditions. The second setting is the motor delay time. This is the time of delay between when the evac ends and the load time begins. This allows the planter to finish out planting of the plot at normal transmission speed before speeding up the plate. The third setting is the divider open time. This just needs to be open long enough for all the seeds to fall from the divider to the staging gate. The fourth setting is our load time. This is the time to load the plate with new seed. The new seed is picked up by the rotating seed plate. This primes the seed meter with the new plot. When the planter moves forward, it will begin planting using the mechanical transmission. This enables you to shorten your alley. The fifth setting is the alley wiper on. This is the time after evac begins before the alley wiper turns on. This leaves a crisp edge at the beginning of the alley or at the end of the plot. The sixth setting is the alley wiper off. This is the duration of time from when the alley wiper turns on to when the alley wiper turns off. This leaves a crisp edge at the end of the alley or the beginning of the plot. Set this to 00, 0.00 seconds to disengage the alley wiper. Alley wiper will not activate if set to 00, 0.00 seconds. The first time you use the planter, you may not have any idea where to start with the timers and the speed for the hydraulic override motor for the seed shaft. Following are examples that show what setting affects different parts of the plot. The first thing to remember when setting the planter is to only change one thing at a time, so you will know what worked and what didn't. The second thing is speed plays a big part in how wide your alleys are. The faster you go, the wider your minimum alley can be. The first setting that we'll set is our divider open time. We want just enough divider open time for all the seeds to fall from the divider to the staging gate. The next setting is our evac time. We want enough evac time to evacuate any extra seeds from one plot to the next. This is the starting point to creating our alley. We never want less than one second of evac time. If we don't have enough evac time, we can get contamination between the plots. Increasing the evac time makes the alley longer. Once we are sure we have enough evac time, we can move on to the load time and motor delay settings to narrow our alley. With zero motor delay, the motor speeds up too early, bunching the seeds at the end of the plot. We want enough motor delay to just plant one or two seeds past the end of the plot. We will use the alley wiper settings to wipe off the extra seeds. Too much load time causes bunching of seeds at the beginning of the plot. We want just enough load time to have a couple of seeds extra that we will wipe off with the alley wiper. The last two settings in this menu are the alley wiper on and alley wiper off time. Alley wiper on is how long after evacuation starts to engage the alley wiper to knock excess seeds off the plate. The alley wiper off time is the duration that the alley wiper is engaged. Too much alley wiper off time will make the alley too wide. If using a cable and check heads or a cable winder to trip the planter, you will need to set the plot length factor. Set up your cable and drive the planter through at least 10 plots. Write down the last plot length for these 10 plots. Take an average of the last plot lengths. Divide the average by the inches between buttons on the cable to get a ratio. Multiply the ratio by the plot length factor in the PLC settings. This will yield you a new plot length factor. Enter the new plot length factor into the PLC and test again. Our average of the 10 plots is 237.5 inches. Our buttons on our cable are every 240 inches. So we take our 237.5, divide it by 240, equals 0.9895. Our current plot length factor is 318. So we take our 0.9895 times 318, yield us a new plot length factor of 314.687. If using a cable or a cable winder to plant, we use the setback setting to align our alleys. In this example, the alley is not centered over the button. 
If this were a 3 foot alley, it would appear the button is 12 inches past the last seat of plot 1. To be centered, the button would need to be 18 inches past the last seat in plot 1. Increasing the setback number by 6 would correct this. With the planter set at its shallowest depth, plant several ranges in one direction, and then plant several ranges in the opposite direction. Flag the alleys and measure the difference from pass to pass. With the yellow arrows representing the direction of travel, the top example shows plots with the inline offset set too high. The bottom example shows plots with the inline offset set too low. To adjust, increase or decrease the inline offset by half the measured distance. This example shows an alley with the inline offset set too low. For this, increase the inline offset by 5 inches and run the test again. Depending on the planter, this test may be after repeated several times when changing planting speed. Always remember that the PLC settings will have to be changed and recalibrated when changing speed, seed spacing, alley length, or hydraulic motor speed. Thanks for watching.